taking no that's a promise, not a threat. Uppercut, season, no top, you stop breathing. But we do actually have a, we do have a, thankfully another big card for this, uh, for next weekend too. And it's a big fight. You know, a rematch again for the undisputed super welterweight slash light middleweight championship of the world between unified WBC, WBA, and IBF champion Jamel Charlo and the WBO champion Brian Castaño. Uh, obviously, you know, the first fight was a, was, a, was a really good fight that ended in an unfortunate draw where most people had Castaño actually winning that fight. Um, and, and I mentioned before too that it was this was the first fight I actually felt like Jamal Charlo actually lost because I didn't think he I didn't think he lost to Tony Harrison but I definitely thought because I know beat him this time around. Um, so I mean, and since then obviously there was a, I mean, and neither neither man has actually fought since then too, which is again that's a whole nother conversation. And then, ABC. Yeah, of course. In, in between then, Castano. Blown up to like 195 pounds, which is which is insane. And then you know, and then you know, had to had to work his way down. And in the process, well, what's more insane is Virgil Ortiz was still bigger than dude. You <laughs> <It was> facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was facts too. And then the fight had to be delayed because you know uh, he he suffered a bicep injury in sparring. You know, and then meanwhile, Jamel Charlo uh, alarmingly has been lit. It's very close to this fight and then usually you know i mean boxers i mean i'm not saying boxers are not safe they have their vices and shit like that but you know when it's close to a fight you kind of want them to be like look like they're actually like sober <laughs> you know what i'm saying I mean, that's like, the hardest drinking training ass boxer i've ever seen in my life when, when you can do whole 10 minute interviews about jumping rope like you're in shape <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i do feel where you cover from like I feel like Jamel, he's always like 11 on a scale of 1 through 10 when it comes to in shape. But sometimes he might, but even if he comes in at 9, mm -hmm. that's still, like he needs all 11 for, for Castagno, so I feel like. Yeah, so it's, it's just, you know, but it's other than that, and, you know, and then like I said, Castagno, usually, because, I mean, now it's also kind of, you know, a little question about Castagno, because, you know, Castagno lost all this weight and he had this bicep injury. Can he actually put together the performance that he did his first fight around? Um, you know, which like dude, like he he gave Mel some, he gave Mel absolute hell uh, in that fight. Like, uh, you know, like dude, dude, you know that that's probably his best career performance uh, I've seen uh, as a, you know as a pro. You know, and I give him, and I give him full respect because he is the first fighter from the PBC to go off his platform to get a belt and to retain it. He's the first to actually do that. And there's only been a few of them that have actually have actually that have actually have actually gone to point where they defended, but they've lost their belts. So, uh, so, uh, but yeah, man, like this is this is definitely been anticipated. You know, we all think you know it should be fireworks, and whatnot. So, uh, P, what is your what are your thoughts about this rematch? I'm glad we're getting it. I mean, it needed to happen. The last fight was controversial, and you know, left a lot to be desired with the ending. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there, I mean, it made no sense to do anything other than run it back right Wait. away. So I'm glad we're getting it. I'm glad everybody stepped aside um, and made the fight happen. So you know, it's, I'm, I'm I'm very happy that we're getting it, and hopefully we can get an actual undisputed this time around. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, 154 hasn't had an undisputed champion since the days of Winky Wright. I think Winky was the first to unify yeah. it to be undisputed at that weight you know so <laughs> this would be the first and the fourth the yeah. fourth and i'm picking uh and i'm picking charlo to win so how are we doing it by decision by ko knockout oh shit what round are we talking ninth round okay um i think he's i think he's more i think he's looked more focused now i think he's ready for this fight and I think Castaño's like I think those months of him eating up and ballooning up are gonna come back to bite him. Um, also, um, I've heard a, a, a little a little rumor that um, and Charlo's kind of talked about it, but he hasn't come out and said it. There's been a lot of talk that like during the first fight, the build up for the first fight, he wasn't really like training with Derek James like that. Something was going on, 
And so he wasn't really in camp with Derek James. Now he's fully back in camp with Derek James. I think, I mean, I think that's going to make a world of a difference. So I think we'll get him. I, I think you put all those factors in. I think you got him out of there. Yeah, no, they, and, 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 and actually, I, 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 I can see that, and I can, I can definitely agree with that. Because, yeah, Castano, like, it was just alarming how Castano would let himself go, like, the way he did, and he was getting injured, trying to prepare for this fight, you know, so it's, and of course, you know, the inactivity. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, I, I mean, I, it's, the, what you talk about is definitely a feasible. And, it, and it's, and it's not like, like, I had Castano winning the first fight, mm-hmm. but it was still a close fight. And all Charlo needs is a couple more adjustments, and he'll he can win this fight. Even if it, even if he doesn't knock him out, he can still win this by decision with a couple of adjustments. He, he so. sure as hell can. He, he definitely can. Like the ball's definitely in his court for that. Pilot, what about you, bro? What do you think? My mind is kind of telling me, <clears throat> excuse me, Castano, but I feel like I still I'm gonna roll with Charlo as well. Um. I feel like he'll make the proper adjustments. I know there was rumors of Cast- of Castano sort of um, ballooning in weight. Like I think you know he no not he actually can said it himself, right? Like yeah, that's not weight. that's not a rumor. Yeah, rumor. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, right. So like that, and I think you know speaking of Reynoso, I think Derek James is going to show why he'll get probably Trainer of the Year this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he'll devise a game plan this time to make Charles successful. I mean, Castano will have his moments, but I think Charlo will make the proper adjustments this go around. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A- absolutely. Uh, LB, what about you, bro? Oh man, I remember once upon a time it was I that was the lone person picking Castano to win. <laughs> Broke it down elegantly. Fight played out pretty much exactly how I said it. He should have won. He should have won. Yeah, yeah. And then we got a draw, but it's one of the rare draws that you you can argue six rounds for Charlo, and I won't even argue against you. <clears throat> That's how competitive and close it was. It was either Charlo uh, winning exchanges and hurting Castano or Castano pressuring Charlo and rocking him on the ropes. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, just to echo what everybody else said, you know, the injuries, uh, wounding up in the yeah, that- <sighs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry, what you about to say? No, I say, yeah, the, yeah, that's, that, that's the thing that, that has me concerned too. It's just, yeah, that it's, I ain't trying to hear that going into a fight with somebody dangerous Jamel Charlo. He's legit one of the like if I was to name like the five most dangerous fighters in boxing, he's up there, uh, monsters up there. Better Can't think of no other. There. Oh yeah, better be is up there, yeah. yeah. And throw some other people in there later, but uh, <laughs> like, he he's up there because it's just it's it's elite punching. He has the clinch gene, all of that shit. He he knows what a gut check is. He can fight through adversity. He knows what it is to come behind and score shots to change fights. He always hits you with the best shot. It's, it's all about are you gonna take his best shot? Right. And and not too many people can take his best shot. And I I think just, you know. Jamel just throw more punches this time and not allow himself to get pushed back and just be a little more assertive. I think he wins this fight. And uh and just going off of what Castano, not only just what Castano's been going through and uh, I think Castano fought really best fight he could last time. And it's hard to fight perfectly. You know, back to back. Right. You get older, and you're talking about coming off injuries. It's a whole year, so it's like, man, that's a lot to ask for. Like, Castano last fight fought like a, he fought a ten. Yeah, he fought like a demon, like dude. Yeah, he was yeah, he was fighting like a pit bull. No point. Yeah, he was one through ten. 
he was a 10 as far as his ability. Like, he gave 100% of that. Charlo, I feel like he fought at a 9. Yeah. But some of that had to do with Castaño as well. But, you know, Jamel still got into his bad habits. And he excelled when he needed to excel, but it wasn't enough. Because Jamel, you know, he don't be winning rounds like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jeff, so, oh, I see you, you made your appearance. Boxing hipsters won last night. <laughs> <Facts. laughs> Shout out to Joshua o, OG right there. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, I, I think I think L going to uh, get the ball rolling early, and I, I'm saying fourth round knockout. Uh, I, and fourth, I think it's fourth, two, oh, go ahead, Pilot. Oh, no, I didn't pick it the way of, uh, I think, uh, I think Charlo will actually get a decision. Yeah, and and, 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 and that, actually, that's my prediction too. Like, cause I think Castano is tough. Castano, I mean, regardless of what's going on with him, I do think he's tough. You know, I, I, I think he's tough. I mean, I mean he because he took some shots from from Jamel Charlo in the first one. That was just like, damn. Like, you know, I mean, even the even the shots that still still stunning him late, he still managed to find a way to stay on his feet. You know, see, but that's the thing. Bell couldn't get like Bell. Was like maybe a split second, you know, a second behind and being explosive enough mm-hmm. to catch up to Castaño. I remember those moments you're talking about. Yeah, like he was always like maybe see a punch or two away from getting a knockdown. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, and maybe that could go into what King P was saying earlier about how he ain't really trained to do it like that. But um, I just think he, you know he's used to the dude's style now. Maybe he has the guy timing. You know he has the height. It's all of that. Mm-hmm. It was all about Jamel just being more assertive, like, and that's basically in all his fights. He like he's he's the same mistake. Is basically he's not assertive. That's in a lot of his fights. He's just waiting to clip you. He falls in love. He truly fell in love with the power. He fell in, yeah. That's he fishes for it. Yeah. I, I wish he boxed more. I wish he's also he's more. also like super economical with his punches. Yeah. Like, to the point where it's a it's a it's a det- it's a deterrent. Like it's 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 actually a detriment to him. That he's yeah, I think so the number like the numbers before that fight was like Castano has the highest output punch output where Charles like towards the bottom. In that yeah, yeah, yeah. Castano's output is always it's oh it's always high. Castano is a very yeah. high output fighter. That's what makes. That's what makes him like a very dangerous fight. Like he won his title off to share with high output. Like he, like that's what he does. Like I mean, so and he kind of handcuffs Charlo, but Charlo is willing to t- take more risk and punch with you. Mm-hmm. Like he's honestly Char- Jamel Charlo naturally does what Canelo would need to do to beat Bavar, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Be, be willing to a fucking exchange at the drop of a dime. And for twelve rounds, and yeah. be first. <laughs> but you, but you know how good a shape you have to be in to do that, right? Right, exactly. So that's why it makes it, that's why you know it, it makes it so hard for Cadella to do that with Jabel. It's like he could do that, and we're just like, dude, why fight like Super Canelo when you are Super Wilder, or whatever the fuck? <laughs> right. Yeah, and then <laughs> I mean, you that, can just box. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the reason why too. Like, I mean, as much as like Castano, you know, impressed me in the in that first fight, I I I, I just don't see it happening in the second fight. So, I mean, I do think Charlo will win a decision. I mean, he, he'll he'll probably win like unanimous decision or something like that. By, by what? By like throwing more punches or just he'll get knockdowns like on some trout shit. The fight the fight will be close as fuck, but knockdowns making him get the win. <laughs> I mean, like, I, how do, you think? I mean, I, I do think that. I mean, I, it just uh, just might increase the activity. I mean, I do think that. I mean, like the biggest thing was Castano was getting off more than Mel was, and was keeping him on his toes with his activity. Whereas I think this time around, I, I actually think, yeah, you know, Mel will probably box more and will really, you know, mix it in, you know, with hard counters, hard counters. He's like, he'll probably run. He'll probably try to plan to run Castano into some shots, especially if, especially if Castano comes in all aggressive like. So that's how I pretty much see. That's how I see the fight like playing out. And the I mean, got a great punch selection too. Now that you brought that up, right? You know, and to my knowledge, Castano has not been put down yet. I don't think he has. As a whereas Charlo has, uh, Mel has actually been down. Um, you know, Who put I, him down? Huh? 
who put him down again? I can't remember who knocked uh, him down. It, it was like one of the. Or this was back in the day when Mel wasn't as offensive. Uh, oh, was so bad days. <laughs> no, it was. I think it was a PBC guy. It was like Charlie Ota. I think that was his. That was the, oh, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah that, this, it, this was it, this was like oh, this was like way back. Say, it's this must have been a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that's a, that's yeah, that's, that's a name you don't hear like that. Yeah, but I mean, Castano's never been put down yet, but Charlo did hurt him, so it's yeah, like it's, not, yeah. it's, it's, it's not inconceivable that you know he could he could, he can't put him yeah. down this time, right? Especially if he punches more. That's why I mean, King P see the see the knockout, but y'all niggas see it as he'll punch more and win rounds. But mm-hmm. Jamel banking on Jamel to win rounds is like. Like banking on Wilder to win rounds, <laughs> but maybe to the, maybe like, not to that extent, like but yeah, yeah. So I say, I mean, like, I mean, this fight, I mean, definitely. So I think all, we all think that Charlo will win this fight. You know, two, what, two, what, two. There's everyone, so everyone you knows there's two knockouts, two decisions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I like I said, I just hope that the you know I just hope that the. Uh, the, the you know they actually do throw the face like I hope I mean hope it's like I mean hopefully it's not like you decide like you know do they're doing two different types of strategies and it makes for a dull fight. Uh, nah, dude, I, dude, dude, there's no way this fight is being. Yeah, dull. last year Even last year was like that was like a fight, top fight, you know top five. Yeah, I mean, yeah. legit one of the top five fights of the year. Like, yeah, definitely. there's no way this fight whether it goes the distance or inside the distance, we'll see a shootout or some some type of violence in some capacity. Like, you'll see some vicious punches. Like, word. There's no way this fight to be a dud. Like, unless someone, I don't even want to put the HC word out there. Right, 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 right. I just you. If you know, you know. Right, but that's the only thing could ruin this shit. Absolutely, and then obviously, and then luckily for this card, this card actually has a has an equally entertaining co-main event. Mm-hmm. You know, one that we in at the welterweight division, one drone. Boots Ennis facing Castillo Clayton, both undefeated. You know, Boots 20, 28 and 0, Clayton 19 0 and 1. Should be 20 and 0, but you know, you know, uh, he kind of got the PBC draw, the victim of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, against Lippinets in the fight, he clearly, I think, I think everyone had him winning. Um, it was had to be Lippinets, like, I mean, they were, at one time, they were trying to make Lippinitz that dude. Yeah, they tried to make him a thing at 147, but Lippinitz didn't bring up really any... I mean, well, the Peterson shit was, you know, that's one thing. But, uh, yeah, he... That was still a fight of the year against him. Yeah, that was past the Peterson. Yeah, but the funny thing is, too, is, like, Eric Bonet gave him all types of help before that one. And it's just Facts. like... Yeah, and then, then I remember that was a damn good fight. Yeah, that was, and then Peterson, you know, the, was put him in a brutal fight, and then after that, Clayton, you know, kind of like, yeah, he's not there, and then Boots, you know, kind of put an end to his one forty seven, you know, with a with a brutal. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think I think Lipinus moved back down to one forty. Yeah, he said he's going back to one forty. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to see if he can fight uh, Darwin Price. That's what's, <laughs> what's up in the air. Right now. Yeah, but, we may uh, or might not get it. We'll see. You. Yeah, but Clayton though Clayton was more of an unknown because I mean Clayton has fought mostly in Canada. I mean, you know, like I mean Clayton. I mean, I mean prior to the Lipinus fight, I mean Clayton. You know, he, I mean he has power. Like he 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 can actually box. He's actually a very smooth boxer. He's very educated. Like yeah. you know, educated hands, educated feet. Like like dude, dude is legit. You know, and obviously this is what makes it perfect for someone like Boots Ennis. Now, I mean, I, I pretty much I think everyone's already crowning Boots as you know as, as as having next because you know he's he's been he, he's due for the bring him down to earth fight <laughs> yeah you know what i mean he's this shit like, might go some rounds <laughs> yeah like I the like he might struggle a little bit no maybe huh i, I feel mean, like he might, might struggle a little bit maybe was, I, I, I feel that way I mean, eventually he will but unfortunately delorme usually delorme is usually a good opponent for you know that type of to see the test him, and he and he took and he, and he took out the Lorme and won. So it's like, you know, uh, yeah. And then the Lorme hit him like maybe once. Yeah. Now, if he takes out Clayton in one, then, then I'll, I'll be I'll be really impressed because yeah. Clayton, yeah, because Clayton Clayton is a tough Clayton is a can box. Clayton is like people cannot be sleeping on Castillo. He's Clayton durable. Like yeah, that. he's big and durable and tall. 
Yeah, he's durable. Yeah, he's, he's, an actual, he's an actual welterweight, like size wise. Yeah, very much so. And he, he and just like Boots, he could eventually go to like one fifty four. Like he has a frame. For right, and Clayton. I mean, the only thing with Clayton that that might you consider the fans is Clayton is thirty four right now, so he's not past it. He's not. He's he's definitely in his prime. But it's like one of those things. Like you just. Like, I mean, he is he he is older, but he doesn't have that much um, damage. I mean, he only he's only has twenty fights, twenty pro fights. So it's hey, like Pedro, but, I need to make it right now. Stage of his career. Yeah, it's make it or break it for him. Like this is the fight that he like. If he uh, if, uh, if he wants to go to the next level, he needs to take out Boots. And Boots obviously is being crowned already, as, as I mentioned before. Like everyone says, I mean, he's twenty four. He's young. Everyone's looking for like. You know, and you know, I think I think he's, I think he's ranked high too in, in the welterweight rankings. Like he's, he's, yeah, this is this is actually I think this might be the final quote unquote final IBF eliminator. Yeah, and b- before he's uh, before he's spends his mandatory, which will be which is a whole different conversation all, all together. You know, if that fight ever happens, <laughs> if it ever does, you know. But yeah, no, Clayton Boots. So um, so pilot man, what do you think about this fight? How do you think? How do you see this going? One side of me thinks Boots might face adversity and get to deeper rounds for the first, I guess, for the first time in his career, um, in quote unquote struggle. But another side of me thinks he'll just handle business as usual. Um, so I'm gonna be optimistic and say, say he'll handle business as usual and get a stoppage like at uh, round six. All right. He'll knock, yeah, he'll knock him out in round six. P, what about you? Um, I think that um, I think it'll be a good fight. I think Clayton will put up some resistance. I don't think Boots is just going to run through him. Um, I think Clayton will box him up. You know, do 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 some boxing and you know make it make it tough. But I think uh, Boots will wear him down and get him out of there. I think I think uh, I think Boots will stop him in eight rounds. Okay, that's what it is. LB, what about you? Oh man. Oh. I feel the same way with like like y'all, but part of me feel like Clayton might even fuck around and see that this is. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause you can't box. It just I don't know if he ever been hit with no firepower power like this. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, because you got that but, draw looking at you know. Well, I mean, yeah, Gibbon is the hit, but he ain't no boots. Yeah, no. Right. And then it's like, he ain't got the size of boots either. Like, boots physically strong. Clayton can handle someone like boots. Like, I'm not like boots, but like Gibbon is. But boots, nah, that's a different animal, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, Clayton does, does have a shot. You know, quality boxing. It's a 10-round fight or 12. It's a 12. 12. Damn, hold on. I thought this was a 10. I don't know if you can see the distance. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Chill, chill. Uh, uh. Um, damn, you know what? I think he won some rounds ago. It's two, maybe. Um, I'll say this goes maybe to 10, 10 rounds. So you think Boots will stop, will stop, uh, will stop playing in 10? Yeah, if if you don't get him out by ten, it's probably gonna go to this six. But uh, I, I think Goose gonna look human, and but he's gonna display some the shit that why we expect so much from him, right? And and it just, but it's gonna be a learning moment type of fight too, right? Because I mean, as we all know, Boots to date has not gone past the sixth round, I believe. Uh, so it, it, it'll be interesting to see if Clayton will, you know, get into round seven with him. Uh, and I and I agree. Like I mean, I, I think Clay, Clayton. I think I think highly enough of Clayton. You know, in his abilities, like he he will he will probably get. He'll probably make. He'll probably give Boots. You know, a couple of hard rounds, a couple of close rounds too. But uh, and then, but unfortunately, the unknowns is like can Boots really carry his power late in the fight? Whereas Clayton, at least we've seen him. Like Clayton can at least get, can can box. You know, solid for all twelve rounds. Like he's not really a drop off in his, you know, in his act in this activity or anything like that. Uh, so I I'll give, uh, but I I, I actually do think though. But 
Boots does throw at a higher output. Like Boots has Boots is faster. Like hand speed and everything yeah. is faster than Clayton's. And I think that'll probably be like the big separator between those two. Um, so I mean, I actually do think I, I'm actually gonna go, go out and say, hey, this is gonna be a 12 round win for Boots. Like he will go 12 for the first time, but he will probably be Clayton off activity. You know, but like I said, Clayton will give him a whole bunch of. It will be it will be a hard. I, I do think it will be a somewhat hard fight for him. So what kind of play? One sixteen, one twelve. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm yeah, one sixteen, one twelve ish type of fight. I mean, if it's closer than that, that that'll probably be more a diamond on uh, Clayton really being that damn good. <laughs> so then people gonna be wanting to put up polls and dispense be the boots and it's Keith yeah. Thurman beat boots, it's Crawford beat boots, the Stanionis beat boots, like. And the funny thing is, too, is that now oh, I'm, shit. I'm, about to, oh, I'm about to see what what the odds are for this damn fight. Uh, let's see. Boots probably a three to one. Let's see. Cause yeah. I know they were kind of disrespecting. Uh, they, I know they, they just before on Cano odds were kind of disrespectful. <laughs> Let me see what we got for odds. Odds. Uh, so yeah, so pretty much odds to win. Um, so Ennis is a five to one favorite. Oh damn! Yeah, to win for Clayton, the win is he's, he's like plus three hundred, and then draws twenty one plus twenty one hundred. So <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, the odds are. You know they they are what they are. I mean, Clayton's the clear underdog for this. Uh, you know, for this for this fight. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, if if, if Boots blows uh, Clayton away in this fight in, in a couple of rounds, then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it'll be time to really move Boots into a more some high profile fights. He'll probably fight Crowley, to be honest, sadly. Yeah, that's not my idea. I'm just kidding, I'm yeah, I, 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 we don't need to I, see him again. Great value plan. Like, yeah, no. We plant. Yeah. yeah, I mean Crowley's doing what he's doing, but nah, I, I don't want to see that. <laughs> you know, I don't he ended in the career. He ended the career right there. He made them fight. Yo, that and that's that's also facts too. Like let, let him fight like like a Stone Jonas or someone like that. But now nah, these guys want title. Like they're gonna want title shots. So now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's undone enough. It's like, but, but I do think, yeah. Even though I'm, the, I, I didn't pick a six round start. I think this might be a time because Boots, you know, hype is really high. He might get, you know, pegged down a little bit in terms of uh, maybe, you know, he might look a little normal. Right. And I was, and and, and let's say and like and, and obviously this it's a big thing on boxing Twitter, you know, uh, or in media too. What Boots' ceiling is like is Boots because like, I mean obviously. There are people that we've called, you know, they are the truth or whatever, and then, you know, they end up have faltering a little bit. And then Boots, obviously, is, has looked like he is the truth, but it, like I said, he hasn't been brought down to earth just yet. And it's just, yeah, like, we don't, we just don't know where his level is. I mean, he's, he's a talent for sure. There's no question about that. Because that's the thing, when, when someone just displays all his gifts and abilities and they're not really making glaring mistakes, they get hit maybe once or twice. And, you know, they display a decent, decent chin, whatever. Everything is just off the meter. Like, mm-hmm. what are you expected to do? Of course, you're gonna be like, man, this guy's beast. Like, like, come on. Like, look, I look at it as Abe Abuchi, you know, president. Mm-hmm. He legit had no real flaws, right? <laughs> so, like, when you look at him at the time, of course, you're gonna be like, man, look at dog let it do this. Like, get out of here. Like, <laughs> yo, he would, yo, he'd beat that Savarese. He would put hands on more. Like, mm-hmm. him and Holyfield Tyson would be a slug fest. Like, like, come on. Like, because it just look, some people just have that. You just know, like, they're a fucking problem for everybody. Like, and they do it and they, and they show you. It's not like a, like a fun door where you're like, bro. Oh, He's tall and he throws a gazillion punches and he has great chin. Yeah, he's a problem for him. This is different. This dude doesn't have nothing that's just out of the ordinary. He's not super tall, but he's tall enough. Mm-hmm. 
you know, arms and all that stuff. He's sturdy. He, it's like it's like if someone made a perfect boxer in a damn video game, like, you would probably make him into boots, like real shit. Facts. Like what would he, he throws all the punches correct? Like moves his heads, and he just beat some beat the hell out of guys. He they got one punch and knocked out problems. <laughs> Facts. Like, he, like he doesn't try to fucking box you and, and play cute with it. He just knows he doesn't do. Like if he 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 might have to box more and you see a different game against Clayton, but that all depends on what Clayton brings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he you know he's capable of bringing some heat. So you know, damn, like, I'm hyped for this fight. It's like this should need to be tomorrow. Yeah, this that's a good fight. That's a real good fight. Yeah. No, no doubt. And then just and then obviously and then I mean it's a triple header so I mean the the opener is it's really uh, it's not I mean in terms of it's not really much to really compare it to but it's just interesting because it's a it's another Mexico versus Puerto Rico fight at super at super bantamweight you know with uh, Kevin Gonzalez twenty four zero and one with thirteen knockouts uh, facing Emmanuel Rivera who's nineteen and two with twelve knockouts so I mean. That fight itself, I mean, like I said, I mean, nothing, nothing like a Mexican Puerto Rican fight in the opener to get the car going, you know. So we'll see, we'll see, you know, if if any fireworks uh, pop off on that one. But uh, but yeah, though, yeah, yeah, that card, like, like I said, Showtime's continuing its its streak of excellent cards. Like you know, does, does Mexico win this time? Or, I mean, the one we saw a couple of weeks ago was like lopsided as hell. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, we'll see, but like I say, I, I mean, I just hope that I, I'm just hoping that you know, just the fight, you know, just the opener is good. Like you know, they start off and like you know, they you know, because I mean, it is at uh, you know, it is at uh, you know, they they in Carson, California, man. They at the old uh, StubHub or whatever. I mean, it's gonna be at nine o'clock, right? It's probably starts at six, yeah. Oh no! See, you, this is West Coast time, bro. We 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 have to talk in East Coast time, uh, sorry, yeah. pilot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, before we go on, let me just check the time on that on that card. If it starts at nine or oh, it starts at nine o'clock. Good. Yes. So that's a win for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right, pilot. You can come back. We do. Yeah. Yeah, so, six o'clock Pacific time, just for, just for the West Coast listeners. Yeah, <laughs> that's a yeah, y'all gotta run your errors early. So you know, feel like and we got all day to do shit. Yeah, that's that's what it is. So I, I I'm happy that it's nine o'clock too. So it's not gonna. So there's a chance that won't, we won't the main event won't start until after midnight and shit like that. And I'm not. Yeah, and I have to step pacing around my living room and shit like this to make sure I don't get too comfortable on my couch. <laughs> oh man, but uh, but yeah, it, yeah, this should be. And then uh, just to mention, there, I mean, there is some other boxing on that weekend. I mean, you know, Golden Boy has its car with Zerto, um, you know, making his uh, making his uh, appearances here and there. You know, fighting cause... somebody, you got to Google t- to figure out who. He is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've yeah, I've never heard of him before. You know, but at least uh, Bostel, that... right? isn't like Bostel or some shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. but at least that card at least has an interesting co-main with William Zapata, who's one of the best lightweights in the world, versus Rene Alvarado. So that that's a fight that's worthy of to watch, you know, uh, on that on that particular, and as well as the return of Damn, Oscar, that's a good fight. as well as well as the return of Oscar's cousin Diego De La Hoya, you know, who's you no know, who's still <laughs> who's still trying to come back after getting knocked out by Ronnie Rios a couple years ago. So. So yeah, I mean, it should be a decent card if you want appetizer to watch before the Showtime card. You know, that's there. And then also, oh, no, what time of day is it? You said appetizer. Uh, it's Golden Boy, so I'm pretty sure it probably starts a little earlier than Showtime. Uh, it usually oh, always. Okay. And then of course, uh, <laughs> there's Triller also has a card on there where you have uh, Fernando Vargas's sons, I think, are on this card. As well, and then you have the Pulev brothers in separate main events. One is facing Sergey Kovalev, the other one is facing Jerry Forrest. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I mean, if, so, if, if, I, so if you want, oh, go ahead. No, I, I have a random question, honestly, because I was thinking about this the other day. Since you mentioned uh, William Tato, mm-hmm. 
who do you think has the higher ceiling or more potential? They're, they're both lightweights. Him or Valenzuela? Arreo? The one that had the knockout, right? I'm sure Jose Valenzuela. Know. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. The one uh, the one that just knocked out Vargas. Yeah, the one that had the knockout. Uh, yeah, yeah, the one that, that's not going to be a lightweight any too long because he's fucking big for that weight. <laughs> for that division. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about this the other day with somebody. He was like, yeah, both of them have like pretty high ceilings, but hmm. I, I think I think potential wise, I think El Rayo uh, Valenzuela's um I like him a little better to be honest. She I like her. I like Zapata a lot better than, than Valenzuela. Valenzuela knocking knocking out a faded Vargas doesn't really move me like that. Yeah. Where is it? And Zapata just look like he's just a problem, man. Yeah, like a, a legit problem. Like, you know, like, I mean, dude, I mean, dude is just like. like that's like a hard line of boxing. That's like a warehouse job at midnight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that Tanahara fight. And Tanahara is a pretty, you know, is a difficult fight. Yeah, he beat the shit out of Tanahara. Yeah, had this dude all against the ropes to. Salido dude, like come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I said. I mean, so the fact that he's putting uh, he's he's putting uh, against Rene Alvarado, who's a tough, rugged guy himself. It's like, you know, it, that's that's gonna be an interesting fight. I mean, my, I mean, Alvarado is not a guy that you know gets that gets knocked around or knocked out like that. So I mean, he only has one knockout loss, and that was like a, that was a minute ago. So, so yeah, I yeah, he got some power too. So, so yeah, so so that, that's why at least. Truthfully, that should probably be the main event instead of Zerto, but hey, I, I know what, but Oscar's trying to build a star or something, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what we get what we get. Yeah, at least Zerto's not gonna do it. I give him that. He's calling the ball out and people out, so he's doing what he's supposed to do. Right. He should be doing that as a co main because Yo, this fact. is the real main event. Like and then that's the problem with because it's like shit like this is why they take so long to Get boxers to the next level, play mm-hmm. to stars. William Zapata, if he's going to be known as that dude, or at least the cleanup guy for all the dangerous fights Brian Garcia is going to mm-hmm. That's what he is, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he's going to do that, at least get him some main events. Like, at least, like, you know how Top Rank had Kodo and Martin, but they still made Vargas, you know, his own little thing. Like, yeah. he was still like the, the WBO champion, but he was a handful. But right. Like, he was like ECW handful, but like Total was like Monday yeah. Night Raw. Like, <laughs> right. That's how they did that shit. So it's like, like damn, Oscar, like, were you paying attention when you was at the top rank? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the playbook already out there, like, just do that shit. Like, like, and like he fucked that up with, with uh, Blair Cobb and Victor and uh, Virgil Martinez. Right. And Zapata is, is, is an actual talent, so you just don't want to see Zapata like. Zapata is ready for us a big fight. You just don't want him to see him falter to the point where, you know, yeah. he, he doesn't get to the next level and he, then he loses an upset to someone he shouldn't be losing to. And honestly, this is a big fight, but it's not treated like it should be the best fight. Perhaps. You know, but but yeah, but at least but let's say you know, yeah, so, so there's plenty of boxing options depending on your depending on your flavor. So I mean, you know, I mean if the you know, I mean if the, I'm pretty sure one of these two, the Golden Part or the Triller card, there's probably gonna be some fuckery on on, on one of those on those cards, you know. And then of course you, then you have the excellent Charlo card, Charlo Castanio two card on Showtime. So yeah, should be a good weekend of boxing next weekend. Um, uh, yeah, I could talk. 